In this video, we are going to go back into this seascape painting and fix the rocks. Too many rocks for such a small painting. It's got to go. It's got to be like adjusted. My name is Vita Evenson and I paint Greece. Okay, so when you add too many things uh, into your painting that are unnecessary, especially rocks, Rocks have always been kind of hard for me. I don't know why. I tend to paint potatoes and not rocks. So I'm going to uh, alter the scene. It's, I'm going to make it completely different than what is actually in the scene down there. There's a picture of it. <laughs> you can see there's like all sorts of potatoes everywhere, potato rocks everywhere. So I'm going to go in and adjust that and fix it today. For the members, I'm going to upload a full length video on my YouTube channel. Uh, members only. It's $2.99 a month. If you want to sign up and join, you can uh, listen to me talking through the entire process. Uh, but you know, if you're going to watch this in the time lapse video on the regular YouTube channel, you're going to get plenty out of it anyway. So, either way, um, with that, let's get started. First thing I need to do is add some liquid on top of the area that I want to paint because it has been sitting for a while and uh, just to um, to get a medium on the dry canvas and I'm just gonna go in and mix uh, burnt sienna ultramarine blue and white and uh, create a gray uh, for this uh, these rocks that are in shadow and just blending them together right over the top and also being aware of the directional pull which way the rocks are going and I want them all to kind of point to my focal area which will be that that rock uh, with the little wavelet coming around it and uh, adding more of a pinkish tone into the background rocks there and getting rid of a lot of the detail as well and uh, you know just working through and kind of getting a better feel. I'm not going to get rid of all the rocks, but uh, most of them. And uh, coming in with some um, shadow just to get the feel that there are lots of rocks there, deepening some of the shadows here in the corner because, you know, you don't want the eye to go out. You don't need information in those corners. I'm just trying to adjust the feel of the rocks. I want the light to be coming around and you know the play between the dark and the light. These, uh, The design of the triangles um, of the various values that are at the basis of this painting. Okay so you can see with just a few brush strokes and just taking all those multitude of potato rocks and flattening them out and bringing them together it relaxed the painting. Like you can look at it and not be so jarred by so many rocks, <laughs> so many potato rocks. And it just really calmed down and is uh, will turn the emphasis of the point of the painting, which is the sunlight coming around, the morning sun coming around that little bend and uh, how it hits the water in uh, in light and what happens in the shadows. So, you know, uh, we really didn't need emphasis on all those little tiny rocks. The painting is not about the rocks. It's about the morning light. Uh, so it just everything just calmed down and shifted from the emphasis on too many rocks to the emphasis on the feel of the morning light and that's what we're after. So that's another example of when you come into a scene that you're painting outside that you don't copy, you just don't copy it, you don't copy it. You use the information, bring it in and create it. And you can change things, you can alter depending on how it goes. When you have the reason why you are painting this painting in other words the morning light coming across you know that's 
what I, that's why I chose that spot and why I loved the idea. Then you know how to go about painting it when you hold on to the reason. Okay, so with that, you guys be inspired, be creative, be you, and have a beautiful day.